as Kakali said, in Chinese language, the word they use to describe Africa is exactly what she said. It means dark continent. And, and it was true. You know, Africa is a very dark, not in the way we look, but also in reality, it's a very dark continent. But God amazingly trusts me. Uh, as I speak to you right now, the whole world, where God is moving is Africa. The whole world. My country, we have about 25 million people, and out of that 25, 65% are Christians. And uh, we have Christian influence from our parliament house all the way down to the prison houses. Uh, God is moving so powerfully, so powerfully in my country. I preach on radio once a, a week and reaches millions. And I've seen miracles, signs and wonders, blind eyes open and just the preaching on the radio. A lot of things are happening. Uh, I have Rastafarians calling me. They, they, they want to know God and all those things. Muslims, Muslims coming to church for prayer and all those things. God is at work. Amen. Seriously. Seriously. And I, if there is any place at all you want to be, come to Africa. Not as a tourist, but just come to catch the fire. Amen. Because the place is on fire for the Lord. So much. So much that uh, um, our nation has transformed. Uh, in 1979, in our country, we went through a military coup. And uh, the, the nation went downhill. We struggled. Um, to get a loaf of bread, you got to queue for about four, six hours before you can get a loaf of bread. And that, 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 that was how bad the country came. And uh, people started seeking the face of God. And people went on the, on the mountains, hills, fasted, prayed before God, and we saw God coming down. And the whole nation has been transformed now. Now, in my country now, in Ghana, all the churches, about 95% are spirit-filled. Mm. I mean, you talk about Roman Catholic priests, spirit-filled, speaking tongues, prophesying. Mm -hmm. Moving to the gates, Anglican, Presby, Methodist, name them. Because you can't do it any other way. That's what's happening. But CNN wouldn't you know, publicize this to you. They only talk about, so I call CNN continuous negative news. They won't tell you some of the good things that are happening. It's the best place to be. This was with me about three weeks ago. And we had a, we had a good time. We had a good time. Because I, I, I have a pastor's conference that I organize every, every year. Where I have pastors coming over. Uh, to South Africa, all over the place. And uh, this was uh, one of the main speakers. And it was good. He did really well. This is a very long way to fly. To come to. And at his age, he did extremely well. Yeah, and uh, he, he ministered very well, and people really enjoy his ministry. And uh, we would love to have him back again if he will come back. So, so I really thank God and appreciate uh, my relationship with uh, this and Kali. After faith, I had that relationship with this. And uh, through that, we traveled to Israel and other places. We planned to establish a Bible college in Israel. And uh, everything was in place when the last uh, huge turmoil uh, uh, erupted. So we couldn't get it. Uh, but uh, we are still trusting God at one day. So God is good and God is moving. And I'm trusting that something is going to happen. But trust me, uh, there has been a shift in the spirit. You know, I believe New Zealand is the most rich country in the world. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but that is the reality. Because I travel through New Zealand, all over the place, I preach everywhere. The churches are dying. Trust me, the churches are dying. If you don't know, we are dying. 
she, the people I knew 19 years ago that were doing well over here, when I arrived, I started asking all of them, where is this guy? He's out. Where is this guy? He's out. Where is this guy? He's out. All of them. All of them are out. And some of them are in insurance companies, sales, you know, and they are in real estate business and so forth and so on. Sad mm -hmm. to see such a thing happening to the body of Christ. So it's time that we need to look into it and diagnose the, the, the root cause of the problem. And the problem is New Zealand has caused it. And we need to bring it back. You see, now you look at those brisky, all of them, they are 80 years plus. Their time is over. Trust me. Because how much strength has he got to deal with demons? Physically, he can't. You see, because if I tell you a lot of things you gotta go through, the deliverance thing, you need to have the physique. Last year I preached in Perth, Australia. And there was this guy, macho guy, macho man, I mean physically built. A man that can single-handedly load a 40 feet a container by his hand within two hours. And uh, he was in the meeting and prayed and the Holy Ghost just came upon him and he started manifesting. Six men couldn't hold him down. So if you have 80 plus people, how can they handle such a thing? We need more youth, more young people that have the strength to come up and catch up that mantle so that they can run with it. But unfortunately, the young people are not on that direction. But we want to bring that thing back to New Zealand. So please understand that. Now, those of you that are studying right now, let me tell you, this is the center of the world. If you don't know, it might be the uppermost part of the world. But in God's calendar, it is the center of the world. So make sure that you make every use of your time here. Because God has saturated the atmosphere here. And if you get yourself connected well and tune yourself into what is being taught here, it will take you to places and the nations. So don't joke. When I was here, I wasn't interested in going to the beach. I wasn't interested in going to the hot tubs. I wasn't interested in going to any place. All that I was interested in was the Bible, my studies, and the prayer. Yes, that was all that I did over here. I was praying three, four hours every day when I was here. Now, trust me, you ask Kali and them, we saw God move over here. We will come to, a, you know, a class like this, and uh, a group of us will start singing. We will sing for hours without stopping. Oh, the kind of intensity the spirit came down over here. So please, uh, don't be distracted by these, you know, electrical cash gadgets. Like apples and earphones and these and uh, those kind of stuff. Push them away. They have become necessary evils. You don't know. So you got to get yourself tuned for the Lord because the world is ready looking for some men and women like you. And I don't know about you. And I look at my cousin bros and uh, I want to tell my cousin bros it's time to wake them up. Yeah. It's time to go see this, buddy. Is it because I'm half, I'm, I'm half cousin, you got to understand that. I've, I've ministered in uh, Oporiki, Taniatua, Tokorua, Tiamotu, uh, all those places, you know, um, small, small villages in New Zealand. I've been in those places. And uh, you see the need in this country is huge. But the laborers are few. Yes, yes. I'm telling you. The need is huge, but the laborers are few. And uh, we need to just wake up and just get ourselves moving. Are we ready for church this evening? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Come, let me see you. Are you ready for church? Yeah. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. You are the man. Shall we be on our feet, please? Let's be on our feet. I want you to go to five people, five people, then that just.
embraced them and told them that your season has come. Ooh, love to oh, your season has come. I mean, I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take everyone. What do you reckon? You're nervous, Barry. Oh, for this. Is this what I am? Your season has come. Your season has come. Your season has come. Your season has come. Oh, God is good. Who's ready to get rocked? I said, God is good. God is good. I was talking to a guy some time ago here in New Zealand. I said, Why is it that Kimis are so quiet in church? Yeah! <laughs> and the guy said, You see, Kiwis are nice people, very polite, nice people. So that's how we are. We go to church and we reference God. And I said, Is that, is that true? He said, yeah. I said, no, that is inaccurate. <laughs> and I said, you know why? The same Kiwis gets to the rugby field. Uh, yes. Come on. Yes. And they are not the same as in the church. No. So what's going on? Tell me. Come on. That's right. Come on. You're scared of being loud. Uh-huh. It means that they found something that they love in the rugby field. That's right. I got a question. Yes. Yeah. So please understand that. You see, anytime I, I meet, you know, the Maori folks, the, you know, I, I've been in the Marais, different places. Marais, rich in Marais, but different places. And I speak to her and say, hey, you live in a beautiful country like this. Why are you not waking up? Mm. Do you know why people who live in a beautiful country like this and they want to commit suicide? Yeah. People live in a country where they see poverty, hunger, and those things. Nobody <laughs> want to die. It means something is wrong. You got to understand that. You see, we can't, you know, we can't, you know, fake the love of God above the realities on the ground. We can say that everything is fine. God loves all of us. Whereby things are not fixed. Because we got to be in a realignment with God's plan before we can feel fulfillment. And until we come to the alignment with God's original intentions, we are not going to feel fulfilled. Because food, sex, entertainment can never fix the vacuum in our lives. I tell you, I've been in, in, in prisons. I've visited, you know, all the, the prisons in New Zealand here, and you see men that are destined and promising life, yet they are behind doors. Because the churches have failed them. The biggest problem in our world today is not people that are practicing homosexuality. The biggest problem in our world today are not the people in the parliament houses, not the people in the White House or Westminster and those places, German Bundesliga and all those things. The biggest problem is the church. God's biggest headache is the church. Not the people on the street, trust me. I've preached in Germany several times. And you go and look to this wonderful architectural design Lutheran churches, but there's nobody in. Mm -hmm. Trust me. And some of these buildings are being converted. You, you, you go to London, I, I travel to London, I preach in London several times. And you move into there that most churches are converted into apartments. And I say, crazy. Crazy. In my country, uh, movie houses, every movie house has, has turned to church. 
The churches have bought all the movie houses. So why are you people now going backwards while we are heading towards? So this is the season. This is the time. We can't waste any more time. It has nothing to do with your age. You might be the, you might be very old, you might be young. It has nothing to do with what God wants to do with your life. You can look at what is happening today. It's 80 years. And it's still preaching all over the world. So now look at you young guys. What are you guys doing? You are busy in this your cast thing. Busy. Uh, in London, you get into the, the train and everybody's busy, busy. They are doing this thing, this thing. And you don't know what they are doing. Everybody's texting and watching and playing and doing all that kind of stuff. Come on now. God have mercy on us. Did you bring your Bible with you? Yes. yes. Do you have a Bible? Yes. Let me see your Bible. If you do have a Bible, let me see your Bible. Wonderful. Wonderful. No. Let's uh, open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, the prophet, the 37th chapter. Isaiah, yeah, 37th chapter. 37. Do you, do you guys speak English? Shocking. Uh, how do you say? 37. 37. 37. 37. Yes. 37. And how do you say Isaiah? Isaiah. 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 Okay. Isaiah. Okay, please speak English. Isaiah. 37. Verse number one, number two, and number three. Let's go to the and it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it uh, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. This is what I like. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shibna, the scribe, and the elders of the priest covered with sackcloth unto Isaiah. The prophet, the son of Amos. Verse number three. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is the day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy. For the children are come to birth, and there is no strength to bring forth. Father, we thank you this moment that we could come together as a confederation of your people. And I ask the Lord, you bless us and endow us with your glory Amen. so that we will walk out here ready to change our environment. Amen. We bless you in Jesus' precious name I pray. Let everybody shout a mighty Amen. Amen. Before you take your seat, you need to understand that the days we live in is the most troublous days ever happened on the face of the earth. We are in trouble. We are in trouble. The reason we are in trouble is because we as the church have lost it. We don't know why we are here. We don't know why we, we were saved. We don't know why God called us. And we don't know why we are still alive in this planet and today as I'm speaking to you right now. Now listen to this. If heaven was the ultimate reason why Jesus came to save you, then why are you here? If heaven is the ultimate reason why Jesus died and saved you. Why are you standing here tonight? You should have been dead and gone to heaven long ago. So why are you here? Have you ever 
want you to know about that. If heaven was the ultimate reason why Jesus died on the cross, why are we here for? There has to be something more to it. Something more to it. And I believe that is why the church needs to come to the realization of that. That we are not just preaching heaven, but we are preaching a message that will populate the earth with God's kingdom. Because on this dimension, the kingdom of God is supposed to reign. Yes, yes. We are not waiting to get up there before we enjoy the fullness of God. Because Jesus said, when you pray, say, let your will as it is in heaven, so shall it be here. So me, I don't believe that when we get to heaven, it's going to be better. We got to start living heavenly from here. You can't fly without just taking a one stroke. So you can't tell me you're going to heaven, when well, you are not experiencing heaven here. It's an error. <laughs> and do you know what? It is the most is the most crucial moment of the of the of the season, and at the, at the same time, it is the best season to be alive. Yes. The best of the times is now, because any time darkness prevails, light. Yes. yes. Yeah. But things to make, you know, it's prominence among them. Because without darkness, you can't see light. Because when it's 12 noon in the day, nobody talks about light. It's just light. So you don't see any light. It's normal. But when it gets dark, then light stands out. And that is what we stand for. You see, the reason why New Zealand is ready for the move of God is that when New Zealand is now swimming in darkness, yes. Yes. and it means that something is ready. Yeah. Something is ready. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So don't don't go to bed. It's time to work. Yeah. You see, the Bible says where we read, you know. Um, a king of Assyria one day sent a message to a king of Israel. And that time the king of Israel was Hezekiah. And the king of Assyria sent a message through a guy. Uh, and that guy came to uh, Hezekiah and delivered the message to him and says that the, the greatest king on earth, Assyria king, is now coming after you. And he wants you to know that he's coming after you. He will not fail. He will come after you. And this Assyria king has defeated a lot of nations at that, at that particular moment in history. So he was on the peak. And here came a letter, hand delivered, a sign of seriousness that I'm coming after you. So when Hezekiah received the letter, now the first thing that he did, which I love, is that the Bible says Hezekiah you know, just covered himself with a sackcloth. Now the sackcloth, as we know in the Jewish culture, means a sign of what? A sign of what? A sign of mourning and grief. That something terrible has happened. And they can't bear in their own natural strength. And when he put that significant over his body, he didn't stay in that condition. He moved into the house of the Lord. You see, a lot of Kiwi churches, when they are in grief, they just turn up to their drugs. How can you take antidepressant drugs? Are you crazy? Yeah. You don't take anti-depression drugs. <laughs> when you are depressed, you go to God. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength, it's not drugs. Because the drugs only just let, you know, lift, you know, just sensational, you know, into your system. But at the end, it will kill you. 
So you don't take drugs yeah. and try to relieve something that is more spiritual. Because yeah. yeah. you can use a natural you know, remedy to solve spiritual problems. <laughs> so you got to understand that we pray for a lot of people, people that are going crazy, we pray for them, the Spirit to love them, and they became very sound. It tells you that you, know, you walk through some people, they are having mental problems and they, the doctors are giving them all doses of kinds of, you know, it, it won't solve the problem. Yeah. There was a woman in London about two years ago, I was sharing with the class two years ago, a woman that was having some serious problem. They would give this woman, I don't know uh, the name of the drug, I think they call it, is it morphine or something? Yeah. Yeah, just to reduce the pain. They would give her a dose and dose, the pain wouldn't go away. And the doctors declared that she was going to die two years back. And uh, somebody told me, I know, uh, a relative told me that I have to visit her in London and pray for her. Now when I got to London, before I got to her house, a night before I got to her house, the demons came to this woman and said, the man who is coming to see you tomorrow, don't open your door for him. So, which means that her problem was a demonic. Now God also was so good. God restricted me of calling her and making an appointment before going to her house. So I showed up in her house without any appointment. So before she realized I was knocking the door. The Holy Spirit is very smart. So the lady opened the door and as she looked at me and said, it's a pastor. If you called me earlier last night, I would have said no. Because the Spirit told me not to allow you in this house. And we prayed for her and the woman was delivered. She's still alive today. The doctor said that she was going to die two years back. She's still kicking and alive today. The devil is a liar. So when Hezekiah received that letter and uh, she... She entered into the mood of grief, anxiety, depression, and those, but she, he went into the house of the Lord. And when he went into the house of the Lord, this is what he did. That he called his elders and gathered all of them. And he said, today, send this message to the prophet Isaiah. And this is the message to Isaiah. He said, prophet, man of God, now listen to this. Today is the day of trouble. The reason is the day of trouble is this. Then he described the situation like this. He said, Azar, this is what I want you to know. The reason why it's a day of trouble for me and the whole nation is this. It's like a woman that I've carried a baby for nine months. Yeah. And I've come to the day of delivery. But the strength oh. to bring forth that baby yeah. that she's been expecting all these days. Oh, yeah. The strength is no more. Woo! To bring the joy she's been expecting for nine months. Yes. So what should we do? Yes. So she he used that natural, you know, yeah. uh, 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 how, how do I put it? Metaphor yeah. to describe the condition of the spiritual strength yes. in the face of that unprecedented challenge. And he said, we are full of expectations. We are full of dreams and full of aspirations. Yet the strength to deliver is no more. As I travel all over the world, can I tell you something over here? One common thing I'm realizing is that many people have run out of steam. Many people don't have steam anymore. The steam has gone, so nothing is being cooked. Because without the steam, you can't cook. And this is what is happening in our world today. If you lose the lubricants in the parts, what happens? Thank you. And this is what is happening right now. Many people are full of aspirations. There are, there are some of you see that here right now. Yeah. You know it in your heart. Yeah. You have some aspirations, some dreams. Beautiful dreams that you know God gave it to you. And anytime it comes into your mind, you feel like you want to pass out and do the for the Lord. But the strength to make it happen is money. So how are we 
going to move? How are we going to reach the world if we don't have the strength? Because you can heal if you are sick. You can restore somebody if you are down there. You can open somebody's eye if you are blind. You can rescue somebody if you are in bondage. You can bring wholeness to somebody if you are partially not free. And we are people ministering to us that are struggling with drugs, struggling with you know, last struggling with, you know, moral deficits in their lives. And they are preaching to us. We wonder why the churches are dying. Because the pulpit lacks the steam. Do you know the reason why people come to the, the presence of God? They don't feel like worshiping. They don't feel like lifting their hands. They don't feel like doing all those things. Because they have lost the steam. The strength is not there. I preach in a church in America, Seattle, and the beautiful people, wonderful people, wealthy people, but you know what? When they come to church, they struggle to even lift their hands like this into the air. And I look at them and say, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> if you can shout for the American football, huh? yeah. Seattle, you know, stadium, they pack six or seven people over there. And they will make a noise, and you can hear them, you know, one, 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 just miles away. And they come to church, and they are quiet like cemetery. Yeah. And I said, what is going on? Because they have lost the steam. Why do we lose the fire? Because we take God for granted. We are too familiar with God. We have become too familiar because we go through the routine. We know what to say, we know the words to say, we know what to do, we know how to position ourselves and posture ourselves to make people feel that we are doing it, but we know deep down in ourselves that we don't have it, we lost it, we know ourselves that we don't have, but we put up a show, we want people to know that everything is fine and everything is correct, but deep down in your closet you know for sure that the Holy Ghost is no longer with you. You know, that is what happened to Samson. Samson said, I'm going to come out. But he didn't realize that that man has a long gone with him. The Lord doesn't want us to go through the emotions and go through that thing that we've been doing over the years. God wants us to get real. If we are down, we are down. That is what the Bible said. The young people will utterly fall. But they that went upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. I came here tonight to prophesy to somebody. It's time for you to move like an eagle. It's time for you to speak like an eagle. It's time for you to soar like an eagle. Because you can continue in this kind of strength. Amen. You are serving a consuming fire. You can be a dead bunch of a guy. You can serve, you can walk. You know, you can represent him accurately if you are dead. You gotta understand that. You know, we gotta be very, very relevant. A lot of people are going to miss you feel, but they themselves need to be saved. Yet they are doing mission work. Come on. It's become a tradition. And the church is trying to go to Asia. Let's go to India and do some, you know, some poor jobs there. So that it appears that we are also, you know, we care for the poor. Forget it, brother. You can't take care of your own pastor. Then you travel out there, then you do some poor petty jobs over there. Trying to put up a banner that you care for the laws. Why don't you care for your pastor? And pastors are dying out of hunger. If you don't know, a lot of people, a lot of preachers I know in this country are living out of ministry because of poverty. Yeah. They are struggling to put a little food on the table. Yeah. Yet, their churches are all over Asia. Yeah. What are you doing there for? Let's get back to the reality. Do you still have the steam? Yeah. Do you still have the steam? Yeah. Yeah. Do you realize that when something is boiling, no, no 
insect can crawl. Oh yes, oh yes. Do you realize that? Oh yes. Oh, you see, the, 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 the reason why a lot of these are pushing on you, the reason why you are depressed, you are this yeah. anxiety, and that, yeah. is because you are too cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so every insect can come in and out, but when you are hot, have you seen an insect, insect that is crawling over a boiling oh, no, no. water? No, no. It doesn't no. happen. No. no. Get back to the fire. Mm -hmm. So Hezekiah said, Azar, do you realize that we carry a lot of, you know, aspirations, but we feel good in ourselves that we, we lack the ability to manifest? What? A pathetic to see a woman carrying a baby for nine months and on the day of the delivery she realized that her joy is at stake because she lacks the ability to produce his, her joy. You see, you can relate it well in our days, because in our days, the doctors don't even allow many women to give birth naturally. They take it before. So most of you will think, oh, what is it, what is this? But in those days, trust me, there was nothing like that. If you carry it, you got to deliver it. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 And when you are at that point, if you're married, you know, I, I'm married with four, get, four girls, so I know what it is. The joy of every career is to see the manifestation of what he has carried for the times. You got to understand that. You got to understand that. The joy of you spending one year, two years on this campus is when you see the manifestation of your expression coming to pass. The greatest joy. But when you walk out and you realize that your ability to manifest is no more, is the most strategic position you can find yourself in. And that was what happened to this guy. He says, We have God, we have aspirations, we have everything, but we lack the lubricants to keep us moving. We lack the steam to keep things boiling. We lack the ability to overcome. We lack the strength to make things happen. Do you realize that we live in a world now, the world is waiting and expecting people with energy and vigor. The world all follow people with energy. If you don't know. They want energy. This is energy generation. They want to see action. Yeah. That is why these days you go into the gym and it's fully packed. People are pumping up. That is the kind of environment we live in now. Women are building up their metabolism. They are building themselves up. You see women's body and you see that yes. Because that is the kind of environment we live in now. If you want to move the youth, they want to see expression of energy. <laughs> Everywhere. Look at our movies today. Our movies that are coming out, all of them are energy oriented. Energy oriented. You know, Spider Man, and everybody's watching Spider Man. A man that can move a car, move a mountain, move this. That is where we are heading towards, buddy. You can't keep growing down there. You gotta be on that aspect. Let the energy flow. Let the energy flow. But where do we get our energy from? When we wait upon the Lord. Yeah. When we wait upon the Lord. Yes, we are not going to walk with men anymore. But we are going to walk with horses. Trust me. Yeah. This year we are going to run with horses. Yes. We are not going to run with men anymore. We are going to do extra. We are going to extra now. The impossible. We were called to do the impossible. Yeah. If you do the possible, it is not a news. When you do the impossible, that is what people want to hear from you. The time has come for you to bring back the fire. Do you have the fire? Do you have the fire? Then prove it. Prove it. It's time to stop playing church and just get into the reality. Let's get into the reality, buddy. 
because when people see fire on you, the people are attracted to something that burns. If there is a fire in this campus, I tell you, you will hear noise all over the place. And the whole town is going to hear about it. So we want fire in the house. Yeah. How many of you are ready? ready? Yeah. Let's get ready to rumble. Buddy. Let's get the fire burning. Get excited. He said, the spirit to deliver us no more. <laughs> and he said, go before the Lord. Maybe God will have mercy on us. That's what I love. That's what he told us. He said, go before the Lord. Maybe the Lord will help us. And I know he will. And I know he will. Are you ready tonight? Yeah! Yeah. Yeah. Are you ready tonight? Yeah! Yeah. Where have you left it? Go and get it back. Where did you drop it? Go and bring it back. Where did you lose it? Go and redeem it back. I know some of you here are seated here, you think to yourself, wow, man, I used to be on fire. So what happened? I know you're thinking in your mind, hey, I used to be on that. But what happened to you? Before, when you open your mouth to sing, you see things begin to happen. Before, things were just falling in place for you. But now you are becoming dry. Like a desert. What has gone wrong with you? Come back home. The only difference between you and other people is that you carry something they don't have. Yes. And that is the fire of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I was seated in New York, business class lounge, waiting for a plane to fly. And there were, um, there were this gentleman sitting there talking, and all of a sudden they look up to me, then the one, oh, look at me, say, who are you? I said, well, I'm just, Trying to pursue that. Then the man looked at me and said, then he goes, Oh, she pushed me and said, Ah, oh, I'm a, a vice president of Uganda. And he said, Can I get you your, your, your business card? I said, Sorry, I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> then he reached down into his pocket, then he came and said, This is my card. You haven't met me before, you don't know me before. Why are you doing that? Because he said, I saw something about you. <laughs> I saw something about you. A man walked to me, an Indian guy in New York, in the lunch, he walked to me and said, You are a preacher, eh? I said, How did you know? He said, There is something about you, something about you. I feel like you are a man of God. And I said, Yes, I am. I it's time to get the church on fire. It's time to get our family on fire.
So that is the problem we have in this country. Because we are dead in the fire, everything goes. And people come to church and they say, hey, I have my right, I have this, I have my right. You don't have any right. All of us are servants to the Lord. When you enter into his presence, you don't have any right. It is him. But when the fire is, is gone, that's why we begin to feel important. And easy get getting offended. The way he spoke to me, you know, he didn't greet me in the church. The pastor didn't look into my eyes in the church. So I'm, I'm offended I'm not coming back to this church. And look at the way he was talking. He was mean. That was uh, He was this and that and that. Boy, you are dead. When you are on fire, those things doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. When you are on fire, you don't care about what somebody is thinking about you. Or somebody saying about you, or somebody feels about you, you don't care. You just want to do the will of the Father. Yeah, amen. But when your fire dies down, you begin to feel the pain. When somebody goes through anesthesia, uh, you can do whatever you want to do with them on the operating table. Because they don't feel anything. But after, mm -hmm. after <laughs> that dose has expired, yeah. you touch me, swish! <laughs> because that thing has expired. And I'm afraid, if I can use that word, some of our churches have expired. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the dose of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. That's why now we feel the pain. Yeah. Let's get back into the fire. Yeah. He said the strength to deliver is no more. Not in this generation. The strength is coming back to you. Is it here tonight? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You sound like Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Faith coming by hearing. Yeah. Hearing by the word of the Lord. And the word of the Lord tonight says that God wants you to be on fire. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Do you want it? Yes. It's going to happen. Hallelujah. It's going to happen. Amen. I told the class last, last Sunday, you know, I got here on last Saturday, Sunday I preached in Hamilton. A guy that I've been in the church for so many years, walking to your pre prayer, you know, meeting before the church, and he was talking to the pastor. He said, You know what? About 45 years, I've. I've, I've, I've I've tried to stop, quit smoking, but I can't. But there's a guy who's in the church, you know, for so many years. And the pastor looked at him and said, well, Pastor Emmanuel has come, so maybe we will pray for you after the service, you see what I So, I just ignored. Pray, you know, minister. And after the minister said that, came out, prayed, boom! He started screaming, manifest. Yeah. Smoke. Wants your temple. Amen. Your body belongs to him. Yes, I mean. So if anything that's not clean, he's gonna get it out. Do you know what? When a fire comes up on anything, it burns you. So if your heart has some weeds, you know, when the fire comes, you will burn it. Understand that. So please open up yourself to the Lord and just be on fire for the Lord. Yeah. And then leave in a pistol of what the fire of God can do yeah. in somebody's life. I come from a very poor family and a poor country. Yeah. But because I committed myself to the grace that is able to save, not only to save me, but to make me a vehicle. Yeah. It's happening right now. Yeah. Trust me. I've been in ministry for 27 years now. I've never had any desire to do any any, any other thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Because I can't find any fulfillment in anything. Yeah. Yeah. And I've been in everywhere. I've, 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 I've stood with higher people, you can name them, politicians, whatever you can name them. I've been picked up from airport with limousines in 
America, limousines, and you can name them. So why would I desire anything for? It's all about the grace of God. Yes. Making yourself available to Him and preserving the fire and keeping the fire. This is what we are here for. Faith is about producing brand fire of the kingdom. And people will go out there and they will begin to multiply. Are you ready? Yeah! I saw you ready! Yeah! Be on your feet, shall we?